So next thing is the blank identifier. And uh, the blank identifier is if you want to throw something away. So if you call something and it's not used, you get an error. So this is the variable A, and it's a string, and this just is like, you know, some value stored in A, right? It's a string stored in A. Here's the variable B, and this is stored in B, and I'm printing out A, but I'm not using B. This is an error. You cannot have a variable in Go that you don't use. Otherwise, Go says, hey, why do you have wasted code in your code? Clean your stuff up. <laughs> No wasted code in your code that's not being used. Comment it out? Okay, fine, keep it there. It's a comment. I don't look at comments, says the compiler. Hold on one second, let's say goodbye. All right, so I can comment that out. Compiler doesn't look at it. Or I could do this. Look, compiler, I know that this is being assigned to a variable, and I'm just going to throw it into a dark hole doesn't like that. What's that say? No new variables on left side of colon equals. So let's do this. Huh. That's interesting. Let's see if that runs, because that's not a good example of uh, the blank identifier. cd dot dot cd dot dot uh, cd 0501 go run main. No new variables, so yeah, same deal. So uh, anyhow, I can't have an unused variable. We'll leave this one here and let's look at the next one and see what, with no error checking, with error checking. All right. So here's HTTP get. And HTTP get as a function returns two things. It returns a response and an error. Okay, great. Yeah, if I go get a web page, there's going to be a response from the server. So I give it my response and my error. And I'm going to use from IOUtil, IOU, read all, I'm going to read the response's body, right? The body of the response. And that gives me a page and an error, right? Or if I look at what it defines, it gives me back a slice of bytes. So I'm going to, I could call that a byte slice, would be a better name, BS, right? And now I could print out that page as a string. And so this is kind of cool. And we could do it for who do you want to scrape? Who do you want to crawl? I don't know. Bitwise. Geekwise. It, what is it? Is it Geekwise? It's, uh, it's either Bitwise Industries or Geekwise Academy. With a dash? No. And there's an R E there, right? All right, so let's go. Huh? Yeah, I mean, thank you. Go into the web, pull down all their code, all their HTML. Well, the point of this example isn't to, it's one to give you a little bit of a preview, like, hey, cool, look at what you could do. And also, I did error checking, if error, if error. And uh, if you don't want to do error checking, right, ooh, take out the error checking and it's like, much easier to read. I threw that error away. It returns a response and an error. And I said, stick that into a dark hole and keep it. I'm not going to do anything with it. That's the black hole, the blank identifier. It just throws a variable away. And now the compiler knows that, OK, you know what you're doing. You're aware it returns two things. You're just throwing one away. I'll let that slide. Right? So that's what the, that's the blank identifier. So when you see that a variable is being thrown away instead of being assi assigned to an identifier. So what would happen if the page didn't exist? Yeah. So if we went somewhere that didn't exist, uh, I think if we went somewhere, when we do the git, it's going to give us an error because that doesn't exist. So uh, let's see if there's a website. That doesn't exist.
uh, this doesn't exist, no such host. X is status, right? So we had, a, we had an error, and we logged fatal, so we logged it, killed our program, and we passed in that error. What's log fatal do? Log fatal takes in variables of any type, an unlimited number of them, two standard output, right, two, and format sprint, whatever that is, right, and then exits. Kind of cool. But the main thing you want to take away is blank identifier. And then there's like a cool little example there for grabbing code. Any more questions?